I want to talk about the idea of a limit. Uh, the concept of limit is really the fundamental new idea in calculus uh, that undergirds everything that follows. So ideas that we'll talk about later, like the derivative and the integral, are really prefaced on the idea of a limit. Uh, so it has far-reaching implications, but it really is a very simple idea. Uh, and I can illustrate uh, the idea of a limit with a, a, a fairly simple example. So to illustrate this new concept of limit, uh, we're going to look at, at this function here. So I have uh, the graph drawn here, and it's a linear function. Uh, it's start, starting, so, the, so it has two halves, it has a right half here and a left half here. And the right half uh, starts at 1 and then goes off at a, uh, at a 45 degree angle. And so that's just this simple linear function, uh, slope 1 starting at 1. So that's this x plus 1 here when x is greater than 0. And then we have the left-hand side here, which starts at negative 1, and going left to right has a slope of 1. So this is x minus 1 when x is less than 0. So that's our function that we're working with. And I want to uh, note for you, so you just want to note here, uh, that this function is not defined at 0. So f of 0 is not defined. Okay, so it doesn't make sense to talk about f of 0. So the domain of this function is all real numbers except 0. And I've written that in interval notation there for you. Uh, it's uh, from negative infinity to 0, uh, and then union 0 to infinity. So we're excluding 0 from the domain of f. So even though this function is not defined at 0, we can still talk about uh, how the function acts as we approach zero. So for example, if I start with uh, x value that's positive, right, so my x is here, I go up to the graph, right, the corresponding value of the function, and as I approach zero, so let, let x go to zero, right, and I'm sort of going to follow the graph as x goes to zero. I'm going to follow the graph, and as I follow the graph, as x approaches zero, the value of the function is approaching the value 1. Right? So the function doesn't actually take on the value 1 when x is 0, but as I approach 0 with x from the right, right? so I'm on the right-hand side, so from the right I approach the value 1 with the function. Right? Even though the function doesn't obtain the value 1 at 0, as x goes to 0 from the right, uh, the, the function tends to the value 1. And similarly, on the left here, if I approach 0 from the left, along the function, right? So my x coming to 0 from the left, if I move to the where I am on the graph corresponding to those x values, I see that my function is tending towards the value negative 1, right? Even though the function doesn't take on any value whatsoever at 0, as x approaches 0 from the left, it still makes clear intuitive sense that the function is approaching the value negative 1 as I approach 0 from the left. And this is really all that's, all that's contained in the idea of limit is, the, is in this very simple idea of the tendency of the function as your x is approaching some value, uh, whether from the right or from the left. So let me summarize what I've just said there here. So the first point is that the function f here approaches the value 1 as x approaches 0 from the right. And right? this is what we said before, as you go to 0 from the right, you follow the function, it's approaching the value 1 here. Right? Even though the function is not defined at 0, as x approaches 0 from the right, you're approaching that value of 1. Right? And the second point in our summary is that uh, the function f approaches the value negative 1 as x approaches 0 from the left. Right? That's what we said before. So as x approaches 0 from the left, you go to the function, and you see that the function values are tending to negative 1 here, right? even though, again, the function is not defined uh, at 0. Uh, we can still say that the, the behavior of the function, the outputs, uh, are that they approach the value negative 1 as x approaches 0 from the left. So these two points in our summary, uh, there's a particular way that we say these things in math. So now this first part of the summary, the function f approaches the value 1 as x approaches 0 from the right. We say the limit of f of x 
as x approaches 0 from the right equals 1. Okay, so we just introduced this new word limit. So as x limits to 0 from the right, right, so you're, x is going to 0 from the right, uh, not really, we're not concerned about what happens at 0. Right? The function is not even defined at 0. So we're talking about the x is sort of getting close to 0 um, and what f is doing as x is making that approach to 0 from the right. Okay, and so we use the word limit for that. So that's the, uh, that's the summary in mathematical language, or well, so that's the translation into mathematical language of that first point in the summary. And then the second point I'll write down for you as well. And so similarly, we would say that the limit of f of x as x approaches uh, 0 from the left equals negative 1. Okay. And as always in math, we have a concise way of writing these grammatical statements. Uh, the statement, the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from the right equals 1. We want to have a compact way of expressing that idea uh, so as not to not to fill up the whole page with, with words. Uh, so what we say in math, so for this, uh, this point 1, what we say is the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from the right equals 1. And what we write is uh, limit, so this is how we write it, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And for the right, we put it, we use a superscript uh, on the limiting point. So x is going to 0. To say from the right, we add this plus sign there to specify from the right and then of f of x right, and then that equals 1. Right, so this is the translation into mathematical notation of the mathematical statement uh, number 1 there. And 2, uh, the only thing that changes is uh, in going from 1 to 2 is right to left. So again we have similarly the limit as x approaches 0 from the left now we use a minus sign. Right, so coming in from the left, we use a minus sign uh, of f of x equals negative 1. And I have to say, to a large degree, that's really it. I mean, if you, if you sort of fundamentally understand this, this example that I'm presenting um, and, and what I'm saying here, then you really grasp the idea of a limit. It's really not that much more complicated at, uh, at the fundamental level. Um, of course, there's going to be, well, You'll see, I mean, you can, you can do a lot with this that makes the idea of a limit seem complicated, but in fact, it really is at, it, at its most core, uh, fundamental root level, no more difficult than what I'm saying here. Okay, so now I want to give you the, the general formulation of the concept of limits, um, and with just a little bit more precision, uh, though not an excess amount. So you can refer yourself to the picture over here. So we have our function f of x, uh, the graph of it. And uh, so we have, in general, the concept of, um, a, of a limit from the right. So, the li so we read this statement, the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x equals l. And you can see that in the picture. As we approach this a from the right, we're moving along the graph, and we see the value of f of x approaches this, uh, this value y uh, on the y-axis of l, right? approaching l there. Um, and so what this means is just that the function f of x can be made arbitrarily close to l, right? So we can make the values of f of x as close to this value l as possible as long as we just take x sufficiently close to a, right? So as long as we make x uh, sufficiently close to a, then the values of the function aren't going to differ from l by very much, okay? And the right limit means that we need... Um, x to be sufficiently close to a from above, right? In other words, x has to be bigger than a, and so x greater than a must hold in this definition. And we have an analogous situation in the for the left-handed limit. So, um, so we're referencing this picture here, and if we approach this a from the left, and so we read this limit as x approaches a from the left, and right? so we're approaching a from the left, of our function f, so we go up to our function f, we approach our a from the left, and we see it's limiting to this value l, right? It's getting close to this value l. And that means that f of x can be made arbitrarily close to l by just taking x sufficiently close to a, just as before. And it doesn't say that the function actually achieves the value of l at a or anything, right? Our function doesn't even have to be defined at a, recall. 
okay? So as long as we take x sufficiently close to a, we're gonna make the values of the function very close to l. That's basically all we're saying. And here our x is uh, below a, right? It's less than a, so x less than a holds in this definition. And the final concept is just a combination of the left and the right-handed limits because it can be the case that the left and the right-hand limits agree. So if you refer to this picture here, you see that as you approach a from the right, right, our function is limiting to this value l here, but also as you approach a from the left, it's approaching that same value l. And so in this picture, uh, our, our val the value of our function at a, so our function is defined at a, it takes the value up here, but the limits are down here at this value l from both the right and the left. And in this case, we just say plainly that the limit as x approaches a, no plus or minus, right? This is just uh, the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l. And this is a two-sided limit. And what it means is just that the right-hand limit and the left-hand limit agree, and they have the same value. Okay, so that's all I've, I've uh, written here. And to say it precisely, our function uh, can be made as close to L as we want, right? So we can make the value of F as close to this L as we want, as long as we take X uh, appropriately close to A here. So take X sufficiently close to, uh, but not equal to A. Okay, so we don't care about uh, X equals A, we only care about X close to and not equal to A in this limit. So I'll re-emphasize one more time, in all these limit definitions, whether we're talking about from the right or left or both sides, we do not care at all uh, about what the function does at the point A, at that limiting point that X is approaching. F, our function F doesn't even need to be defined at that point A, okay? So we do not, the value of a function at A is uh, totally irrelevant in these definitions. Finally, to end the video, I'll give you an example to think about. So here's the graph of a function here. Uh, and first, you want to take a look at uh, these right and left-handed limits and determine the values of those limits. And then once you've done that, you want to ask uh, whether the, uh, the two-handed limit um, as x approaches the three values, negative three, negative two, and two. So consider each of these separately and look at those limits and see if that makes uh, makes sense, whether that has a value according to the, the definition that was given before. And so you're doing the left-handed and right-handed limits for negative three, for negative two, and then for two. And then you're gonna to turn to the question of the, uh, the two-sided limits after that. Okay, have fun.